Hey guys, and welcome to episode 3 of Super Brothers Sword and Sorcery. Sorcery. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Sorcery. Yeah. So, when last we left off, I believe I had finished all of episode 2. I decided, because episode 2 I had to cut into two parts, it took an hour and eight minutes just to complete episode 2. I decided to cut this into approximately 20 minute segments. So I will be recording for 20 minutes, and then I will cut it, and I will come back to it either the next day or two days later, depending on how I feel after work. Because, well, we all know how, you know, you don't want to really do work after you're done work. Yeah. So, let us get into this. Uh, I reduced the volume in-game to 20% because I had to reduce the volume of my microphone to about 50% because I noticed Bandicam does not like to record in-game volume uh, without fireworks style snaps and crackles and pops. So... I reduced the volume in-game to 20%, uh, a little bit lower than I had meant to because in my last video, actually my first video, somebody suggested that I turn down the volume in-game a bit more than I had. So following that suggestion, I did exactly that and did a couple of practice tests just with the main screen volume and the menus and the dinging and whatnot. Um, so hopefully the volume levels are okay. <clears throat> well, let's go. Let's begin session three. Note, this session typically requires a lunar month to complete. Wait, what? What? No, okay. That That's going to be an in-game lunar month, I hope, because... Oh, wait, what is a lunar month? Oh, isn't that like only a week or a couple of days? I don't know. I actually don't know how long a lunar month is. So, you have tamed the gold trigon, and the storm has miraculously lifted. Bravo on that! Consult the Megatome and study its workings, should you become lost or confused. Yeah. A deathless specter still lurks in the darkness beneath Mingyi Tar. Consider the cosmic geometry of the trigon trifecta. Still, not to be confused with the Triforce. Mm-hmm. Observe the moods of the moon. Okay. Our research shows that social support networks may play... Yeah, yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh-huh, Twitter. Be advised that henceforth we will be monitoring your inputs in relative silence. Wait, is that a dead horse? That looks like a dead horse. No, that's my body. That is definitely my body. Yep, that is my body. <laughs> Coughing up blood. Hey, that's a cool way to intro. We groggily awoke from a super deep sleep with no firm recollection of what had happened. We were reminded of the miracle in the meadow and our encounter with the gold trigon. Okay, so that's Logfella and the main character. What new powers had we been granted? I probably messed up a little bit on the voice, but uh, I have a bit of trouble going from day to day doing the same voices over and over again. Logfella was totally floored at how awesome and crazy the fight with the gold trigon sounded from the description we gave him. Logfella wondered about how maybe the gold trigon might be connected to the grim mysteries beyond the iron gate in the meadow. Oh, you mean we get to open the gate? Cool. Logfella didn't dig grim mysteries, so he chose to go home and chop wood. Yes, yes, okay, you do that. And take Dogfella with you, I'm tired of him following me around everywhere. It's a little disconcerting. Okay, so... Um... Oh yeah, it's doing that because my health is low, isn't it? Uh, where is... Oh, whoa, hello. 
Okay, so the Trigon Trifecta is going to open the gate. Let us take a look at that. We spied a gold Trigon thingamajig above the Iron Gate. Maybe it would react to our song of sorcery. Yeah, perhaps. Where's my menu? There it is. Okay, nothing new in the tome. Dark moon in one day. Oh dear. Yeah, my health is at one. <laughs> well, let us sing a song of sorcery. Maybe I'm supposed to, yeah, click and hold. And just click and hold? Am I supposed to do something else? Does it have anything to do? Hmm. Am I supposed to keep clicking on it? Oh. Oh, okay. I didn't even notice the gate going up. Well, through the door we go. Hey, maybe these mushrooms restore my... Whoa, that is a big record. What in the world? Okay, maybe the mus mushrooms restore health while they give you that weird trip. Oh, they do. Okay. Sweet. Ah, they fully restore your health, too. Okay, that's good to know, so I will save those things. Stop wasting them trying to figure out puzzles, because apparently I don't need them for the... Why is Dogfella following me? Um, that looks like a Trigon Trifecta piece that needs to be unlocked. Um, Beyond the cavernous cave in the meadow, we came upon a secluded grove with a collection of, sa of strange stone structures. Was this the Trigon Grove? As we stood beside the first stone structure, we thought of the gold trigon, and we felt our sword stir. Okay, so I pull out my sword, and I attack it. Like a bouse. Like a bouse. Okay. Hmm. Now I gotta come over here and investigate this gravestone. Okay, yeah. I see, I see. And then once we get all three of the Trigon Trifecta, I'm assuming we're going to step on that pedestal and we're going to get te teleported to a faraway land, a place where monsters will... Whoa, hello! In the Trigon Grove, beyond the cavernous cave in the meadow, we approached a solitary grave, and we met a glowing ghost dude. The glowing ghost dude in the Trigon Grove totally freaked us out at first, to be honest. He recognized our Scythian garb, and he saw that we carried the Megatome. He wondered if we understood the esoteric markings inside. In a whisper, he spoke the name of the Deathless Spectre we had awoken in the darkness beneath Mingi Tar, the Gogolithic Mass. Gogolithic. Okay. We knew the dreadful name from the old stories, and we felt our blood run cold. Up until now, I had the feeling that the Gogolithic Mass saw you as a bit of a tourist. Now that you've learned the Song of Sorcery and tamed the Gold Trigon, you will find your every step is haunted. We couldn't tell if the glowing ghost dude was cheering us on, or psyching us out, or what. I uh, probably should have done the quotation stuff in a different voice, because I'm now kind of sure that it was the ghost dude that was talking, and not the narrator, but whatever. We'll roll with it. We told the ghost dude of our intentions to detonate the Megatome atop Mingitar and release the Gogolithic Mass from immortality. We asked about the Trigon Trifecta and the locations of the remaining two Trigons, but his response was irritatingly obtuse. Yeah, I'll do it in a different voice. 
The remaining two trigons exist only in the dreams of the mountain folk. Okay, so we gotta go into the dreams of Logfella and Girl, or we actually have to go into the dream of Dogfella as well. Locating the remaining two trigons is not as, is not so much a question of where it is as when and how. The the glowing ghost dude sure did talk a lot of unhelpful nonsense. Okay, so uh, I guess I gotta go back and talk to. Whoa! Uh, wait, wait, wait. What was that sound? What was that sound? What was that that sound? Okay, maybe that was just the go glowing ghost dude disappearing. All right, let us continue on. Um, does the book have anything to say about what the glowing ghost dude was thinking? Oh, maybe it has something that dog fella was thinking. Uh, no, it has log fella and girl. Mm, golden scar would be me. okay. Yeah, cool. Uh. Okay, and girl. Okay, apparently we disappeared for days. We were out cold for di did I have I lost a point of health permanently? I seem to remember I had five, five little health stars, in the last episode, and now I've only got four. Perhaps we get weaker as we collect all the pieces of the Trigon trifecta. Is this going to be one of those not-so-happy ending endings, kind of like uh, Shout of the Colossus with the main character who ends up being sucked into that uh, vortex and then kind of turned into a baby? He didn't really get turned into a baby, it's just the girl that he resurrected ended up giving birth to a demon spawn that was like part him and part the god, I think? I don't know. It, I haven't really read too much into the story of Shadow of the Colossus since I beat Shadow of the Colossus. Oh, they're both outside. Cool. But I I probably should. I mean, oh, what I would do if they would release Ico on the PC because I don't have like 300 bucks to spend or 250 bucks to spend on, on a PS3 just so I can play Ico. I've heard really good things about it, though. The dark-haired girl sat on a stone beside where the woodsman chopped wood. We asked her about the secrets of the Trigon Grove and the peculiar dreams of the mountain folk of the Caucasus. She told us about how the dreams of her people had held many mysteries and how they reflected the moods of the moon in strange ways. The girl told us to sit by the hearth in the stone hut at any time, either to go dream walking or to gather our strength. We kinda got the feeling that the remaining two trigons might be lost in dreams or something like that. Okay, cool. So I didn't have to waste that mushroom getting my health back. I could have just gone into the hut and rested. Well, I should have figured that one out since it is an RPG. Go rest and get your health back on all that jazz. The woodsman known as Logfella had returned to his wood chopping and he seemed to really be digging it. As opposed to being not super jazzed about leading us around the mountains. Yeah, okay. Well, I guess I can accept that. Logfella had seen the skyward beam in the sky behind the meadow, and so we asked him about the secrets of the Trigon Grove. He spoke of an old story that his people typically told their children to freak them out. Oh cool, an old wives' tale. Logfella spoke of a posse for... Mm, a posse from Scythia who had come seeking the Trigon Trifecta in these forgotten mountains many moons ago. The posse had learned to seek sylvan sprites and send them all skyward, and then they had sought a location to enact a miracle. The posse had hoped to activate the three skyward beams in the Trigon Grove, but they had no idea when or where the Trigons were. When they were. Oh cool, time travel! Huzzah! 
So now it really, really interesting. Okay, so we're gonna have to travel through time to collect the pieces of the Triforce. So we can defeat the <laughs> the uh, evil specter thing, the Goggleus Mass. I think that's what it was called. Yeah, this is really shaping up to be a uh, point-and-click action adventure Legend of Zelda game, except we're not playing as Link. And we don't have pointy hair or a very green outfit, it's more of a brown outfit. The posse wandered aimlessly for a long time on the old road to Mingitar. Eventually they grew weary, and so they stopped. Then the posse was suddenly killed by a deathless spectre on the, by the side of the old road where a handful of graves remain to this day. Well, that's sudden. We told Rogfella that it was a nice story, but actually it didn't freak us out all that much. Well, no, considering we've already encountered the Deathless Spectre, and it didn't kill us... yet. You know, you don't really have much to say either, uh, huh. That's true. Uh, huh. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, that explains why the ghost showed up. Mm-hmm. Okay. That really didn't tell us anything. Well, let's head inside. Well, um, actually, let's go talk to the ghosts. No, 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 I don't care about the pile of chopped wood that's no big deal. I really don't. Let us continue on. I'm gonna go check out that uh, grave site where the Deathless Spectre killed the Scythian Posse. And then, let's see. Look ahead. Okay. I think I know where it is. It's that one on the hill where I thought I was supposed to go to sit down to activate the trees because I didn't know I was supposed to activate the trees. I thought it was, you know, you have to sit in a certain spot of the map just to get you know, stuff to work. Why am I saying you know a lot? I don't know. I think this is where it is. Yeah, there's there's the hill. Oh yeah, there's gonna be ghosts. A ghost. Let's check it out. See what we can learn from the ghost by the graves on the mountain, on the path to Mingi Ta. <clears throat> oh, sup? We approached a collection of graves in a thicket to the side of the old road, and we met a few ghosts who seemed friendly. Well, that's better than the Deathless Spectre. The glowing ghost who spoke was a giant we knew from the old stories whose famous portrait demanded obedience. Last year before the Yuletide, I assembled a posse, and we set out to reassemble the Trigon Trifecta. We had heard about the gateway to the infinite at the summit of Mingitar, and we thought it sounded like something cool to see. So anyways, we tamed the gold trigon and scoped out the trigon grove before setting out to locate the bright moon trigon. Bright moon trigon, okay. Locating the bright moon trigon didn't go so well. We got totally lost, to be honest. Slowly we realized the significance of the lunar cycle, and its influence on the sprites who slumbered in the Twilight Realms. Twilight Realms? Okay. And that's when we sat here and began to monitor the moods of the moon, so we might learn when to be, where, and how. We died of boredom, waiting around for the moods of the moon to change. Okay, actually, we died because of an argument we had because of the boredom. I don't really want to go into it right now, if you don't mind. Okay, so what happened was that one of our posse was a cheating cheater, and we caught him red-handed. A fight broke out, and the cheating cheater fled up the old road towards the perilous precipice. So then we were just hanging out wondering what to do, when all of a sudden the gogolithic mass showed up. Yikes! Okay. Oh, what was that? 
Was that just the ghosts disappearing again? Must have been. All right, then. Back. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. It's just the mood of the moon changing, then? Eh... Ah, the deathless, the, the gogolithic mass. Oh no! Ah! Running time! Running! Running! Run away! Oh no, it's faster than me. Ah! Fight! Oh, it's gonna be this thing again. Is it gonna have a different attack pattern this time, or is it just gonna be a uh, block then counter attack? Yep. Okay. Oh. Uh oh. Dodge! Counterattack! Yeah! There we go! So it does have a slightly different attack pattern. Oh, I can't attack it when it's uh, charging the attack, but I can attack it when it's stunned. Kind of like the first time. Is it going to try and shoot me again with a laser? I'll be ready just in case. Nope. Three attacks, and then I can hit it a couple of times. Yeah, take that. Why am I afraid of this thing? It just keeps getting its ass beat down. I mean, it is kind of creepy, but that's about it. Why are we zoomed in so far? Oh, hey, cool, I can zoom in and out. I didn't actually know that. I don't think it's going to make a huge difference as to what ends up happening. But it is good to know, because that was just a little too close to the to, to the background for me. I like being able to see more of what's going on. Something tells me the Gogolithic Mask is going to show up a whole bunch of times, and we're going to have to fight that thing over and over and over again. Whoa, hello. Why is this glowing? Huh? We spied a curious looking nest box with an inscription that read tweet and ye shall be retweeted. Okay, cool. I'll tweet it. It's kind of cute. I wonder what the retweet's going to be. Let's see. Uh, well, I think now that I've defeated the Gogolithic Mass again... This is as good a place as any to cut it, because we're coming up on about 25 minutes, and any longer, and I think it's going to be just a bit too long. So, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed. I hope it did a better job of the narration, made things a little more entertaining, and hopefully um, the background music and audio is not too loud compared to my mic volume. Hopefully everything is balanced out hope it is uh next video should be up in a couple of days either tomorrow uh, i work tomorrow so pro maybe probably not tomorrow but um i would say friday is probably a good bet feel free to comment below let me know what you think rate and subscribe and i will see you guys next time thank you for watching let's end her out